is Orcish Bowmasters the thing we actually need to make Eldrazi playable? I hope not, because half of my audience will absolutely lose their minds in the comments if it's true. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraven Yu here for another Legacy video, and today Blake has asked me to brew a Black Eldrazi decklist. So, brief history lesson for those of you who weren't around when these absolute monsters released. The combination of Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher immediately took over multiple formats, including Legacy. And Legacy got some powerful curves of things like Chalice of the Void into Thought Not Seer into Reality Smasher that were really hard to interact with. And Legacy is really good as far as Soul Lands are concerned. But the Aldrazi deck can play two more Stompy Lands than any other Stompy deck can play in Legacy. And that means it's very consistent at getting to those four and five mana sources that it needs, or four and five mana, I should say, in order to cast these threats. Now, historically speaking, the Eldrazi decks tend to be colorless. And part of the reason for that is there's really a huge tax on your mana to play these sorts of lands. One thing that I try to constantly reiterate as I talk about mana bases in this format is that if you're playing Ancient Tomb and it's not your primary color, it's really like adding an entirely another color to your, your deck list. And so a lot of times if you are trying to play lands that produce both colorless and black at the same time, it's tough. The pickings are slim. But the grief package with reanimate as well as troll of Kaza doom is just so incredibly strong that it's worth trying in a bunch of weird spots. Eldrazi has been in this spot for quite some time where it's essentially been power crept out of the format, which is a wild thing to say as a few years ago, like or seven years ago maybe when those cards originally released like they were instantly parts of tier one decks in multiple formats but now they're just not cutting it by legacy standards so the hope is that by splashing black we get enough utility to get us out of the early game with cards like grief and reanimate and orcish bowmasters and into that sort of juicy mid game where we could play our eldrazi that everyone knows and loves Okay, maybe some people don't love them. Now, today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, Cool Stuff Inc., as well as Eminence Gaming. And remember, if you ever need any paper magic cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. So this is the deck list as I've drafted it up. And I want to emphasize that this is a first draft. So I'm going to talk about some things that I'm not sure whether or not they belong in the deck list. Starting with the mana base, my big question is what colorless lands are supposed to be in the deck? Eldrazi Temple is a slam dunk, but what about Urza's Saga? Am I supposed to keep the Ancient, so Ancient Song, Ancient Tomb Urza Saga package just because it's so powerful when activating Urza Saga detracts from casting these cards that I'm trying to build my deck around? Unsure. Am I supposed to play Shouldered the Apocalypse, or am I supposed to play something like Opposition Agent that I can just go and cast off of a Dark Ritual? And I'm not sure. This is one of those things where I have to just play a league and figure out where I stand and kind of evaluate this. But the goal is that we can use Dark Ritual to both power out Reality Smasher and Thought Not Seer earlier, and even hardcast a troll in a pinch, while also using it to power out my initial plays like Opposition Agent. Shouldered was something that I really wanted to fit in. Chrome Mox was something that I considered, but like Chrome Mox with Thought Not Seers and Reality Smashers in your deck like is rough, and if we're trying to draw on Chrome Mox and Grief both pitching black cards, that probably ends up being just a little bit too awkward. So that's kind of where I fell on that. It's possible the deck also needs some sort of main deck removal, um, be it Dismember or Shouldred's Edict or something like that. 
Um, cause we're going to be kind of bad against baleful Strix type creatures that can just favorably trade with thought not seer since it doesn't have evasion, but hopefully bow boy can end up taking out creatures of that general nature. Um, the sideboard is pretty stock of what you might expect from a black deck in legacy. So there's not a lot to say there other than maybe like null rod might you might be able to get away with two of those now. Some of the artifact decks, uh, especially 8-cast, are decreasing in popularity, but it's not like they're any less good in a vacuum against a random deck than they used to be. A um, couple quick notes on the mana base. Um, the Deadlands is technically a, a very inefficient removal spell that we can use to get some creatures out of the way, and I've opted to play Underground River as my pain land so that I can kind of fake out being Tesserator because, like, that's a deck that has been seeing just a tiny bit more play and is actually, you know, a tiny pip on the metagame radar. Um, but you also could play the red-black one so that if you could control two of them and someone chain lightnings you, you can send the chain lightning back at their face. Um, but that's a pretty unlikely scenario. With that being said, let's battle. All right, I've kept my opening hand here. My opponent has mulliganed once. And they've got a ponder. I'd like to draw another land at some point in the not-too-distant future. But we're close to enough mana. I am going to sorcery speed and opposition agent, I think. I think that's where I'm at versus Tropical Island. But I don't want my opponent to just play a fetch land. And then I have to just play around that all game. And not use my dark ritual. There's that same tropical island again. Wow! Main deck surgical extraction is wild. <laughs> what the fuck's happening over there? Is this like a rug delver with Dragon Rage Channeler and Surgical is a flex slot? A shuffle doomsday files? Or are you like absolute mad lad, like stifle wasteland nonsense? Um, well, I'm going to end up playing an Orcish Bowmasters on, I think, my opponent's upkeep. They had a brainstorm, they already could have cast it. Yeah, I, I think this is a play out everything proactively matchup. Why didn't you just why didn't you just do that on your own turn when there's a 0% chance that I bowmasters? Like I I had sussed out that they did not have brainstorm because they would have just already cast it and not given me any possible opportunity to do nonsense. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and crash in for my 2 points of damage. Bring my opponent to 15, uh, and I'm just going to hold up Opposition Agent here. Oh, yeah. Well, this feels good. <laughs> We're doing a bully. So the weird thing here is that I do not know exactly what Spaz 696969 is doing over there. Oh, right. Sorry. Magic Online currently has this uninstall, reinstall bug that is quite annoying. And I keep having to redo all my stops every time I record a video. Hopefully this is the last time a patch either has been or will be released soon that fixes it. I am not sure that I am going to change anything for this game. I'm operating on relatively light information. The, the game one surgical is just wild. So I'm I'm just trying to work out what that is. I I I I don't know. I am going to whack the submit button rather than make my deck worse against some potential things my opponent can be doing. Like is the is the main deck surgical just like really hedging against troll that much? This is fine. This is turn one cycle. Turn two bowmaster. Turn three opposition agent. Reality smasher and thought knots here are one land drop behind that. I would say this is an unexciting keep, but a keep. So we're bug then. And I'm getting thought seized. It, it's weird because like the best card in my hand is actually the troll, but you don't want to put that one in graveyard in case I rip reanimate. 
It's a very unusual spot to be in. I have instead lost Bow Boy. Oh, also, sorry, I need to resize this to match. Okay, cool. Um, we'll land. I am just gonna swamp cycle at sorcery speed and pick this up. I don't know if my opponent is randomly playing opposition agent or something that I have to actually worry about. Ooh, hello. I'm casting it. Uh, the question is just which target. Bowmasters is better versus an edict. If one of these two things eats a surgical, I want it to be troll, though. I think I'll target the troll. All right, troll's in play. Ooh, no edict. That's great for me. We'll see. My opponent could just, like, play a Liliana or something. Ooh, that's what we're doing. It's Witherbloom Apprentice, Chain of Smog. Botsies is a great pickup here. I'm very, very happy about that. My opponent doesn't have green up for Veil of Summer either. Surgical Extraction in game one, huh? All right. Thought sees you. It'll be a round of Fluster or a Spell Pierce. That is Chain of Smog. We will be taking that one. So we know exactly what my opponent's cards are. I know that I have to play around days. And Abrupt Decay misses my troll that's in play. Now I can die to a top decked chain of smog at any time and my opponent can do some nice chip damage with witherbloom apprentice Ooh, they've drawn a play oh no they're just fetching around opposition agent that's reasonable all right do this go to combat hit my opponent for six they go to four i'm one mana off of doing this my play is probably, ooh, an Orcish Bowmasters. Uh, my opponent's tapped poorly. So that puts me to nine. I can cast Opposition Agent now. My opponent doesn't have Abrupt Decay available to answer it in this turn cycle. They can hold back three blockers to survive the turn. Nice. So that's their draw, so I know their exact hand. So that's Decay on Opposition Agent. I go to 8, and they're dead on board to troll unless they triple block, which does not even kill the troll. Yeah, uh, and that gets us the match. Black Eldrazi on the board early. Eminence Gaming's Command Tower software is a fantastic way to run 4-player EDH or CEDH events, and it's also great for 1v1 tournaments. It has easy event registration and there's no download required. Everything just runs in browser. The best part is that it's only five bucks. Visit eminence.events for details. All right, my hands keep. My opponent has mulliganed once. I have some muffins as a snack. Life is good. Uh, the life is maybe not good. It's okay if my opponent doesn't reanimate their grief because I can reanimate their grief and then I will be the alpha male and it'll be great. But if they grief and reanimate me in this turn cycle, my hand does stone cold nothing because I can take my Bowmasters and my reanimate, and then I'm going to like have to hard cast a troll. Oh, fuck. Did they have a reanimate and they're just going to reanimate my troll? Fuck me. Oh, God. Everything's ruined. Okay. I have a plan. I have to reanimate their grief. And then next turn. Well, I, I could Dark Ritual reanimate grief bowmasters. If I do it over two turns, I take more damage. But I could save a 1-1 one, one body. The 1-1 one, one body probably doesn't matter more than saving the 6 life. Okay. Dark Ritual. Reanimate grief. Make my opponent's animate dead. All orcish bowmasters. And ping their face. So we're probably playing against a black-red reanimator variant. So now we know. My opponent attacks with the troll. We trade boards, and I think I top deck better than they do on average. 
Although I don't know, all these things just go right back to the graveyard. So maybe that's not true. And I don't have Dalthy Voidwalker. Uh, yeah, life's weird. Also, if they attack, can I just turn into the beatdown? They attack me, put me to 10. I attack them. They go to 8. They get that first attack. It may be worth me taking 6 here to hit them for 5. And I can pump the brakes later if I need to. Ah, that's actually really interesting. Because my, my opponent is going to have more reanimation spells to top deck than I do. I'm I'm going to take the block though. I'm not a hundred percent sure that's correct though. That's a thought seize. My opponent does have an unknown card. They revealed Badlands as their other card before. It makes sense that it would be something like a Grief that they couldn't cast now. Alternatively, it's a land or an Entomb. Ooh, fuck. Backfire. Although, honestly, if they had a reanimate, just putting a troll into play is good enough. Okay, cool. Um, this is a clock. It doesn't have secondary text right now. But I would like to get my opponent to the point where Grizzlebrand in play... Or sorry, reanimate doesn't allow Grizzlebrand to come into play. Fuck. Okay. That's, uh, that's tricky. Yeah, it's unfortunate that I drew them in that order of Thoughtseize versus Thought Not Seer. Because if I do it in the other order, that Grizzlebrand's in exile, and my opponent just has, well, you know, air quotes just, has a pseudo-unblockable 6-5. And it's a 3-turn clock versus a 2-turn clock. Oof. That's two very strong top decks in a row. I don't think I beat that. Yeah, I can get two five mana this turn. The Grizzlebrand just has me in the air. Uh, GG's. So, I'm normally not the biggest Edict fan versus Reanimator, but I think in this matchup specifically, where I'm also going to fuel the graveyard some portion of the time, this Edict is probably good. Uh, Leyline of the Void is reasonable. Dismember clears trolls. I'll think about it and Inquisition. What don't I want? My own trolls might be the answer. Yeah, my own trolls might be the answer. I still have 24 lands, so even if I cut those, I think I'm okay. Like, my opponent's Cruel Archon, or sorry, Archon of Cruelty based lines are just like way better than my troll lines. I think this is the weak link. Reality Smasher may go. Opposition Agent could go. Opposition Agent on the draw is going to be rough. So I want these. And these. It's just really awkward that if I leyline them, I then can't thought seize into reanimate them like their creature. Life's weird. I'm going to go Inquisitions and just try to get a little faster here for this game, I think. Yeah, this is fine. So I'll start with a Ley Line in play. We'll lead on Urborg. I will Dark Ritual. Inquisition my opponent. They were planning on Exhume nonsense, uh, which now doesn't really do anything. I'm honestly just going to take their Faithless Looting here and just leave them stuck with all of those cards. Yep. Uh, although Faithless Looting, Orcish Bowmasters is, you know, a thing. But I still think I'm just supposed to leave those things stranded. What's going on here? Did my mouse just break? Seems like we figured it out. Okay. So my opponent can eventually hardcast some copies of Grief. And that will be their plan moving forward. But I am just on little guy's beat down. And I'll play another Bowmasters here. And ping them again to amass a slightly bigger army to get this hit in. And we'll see if what I'm doing ends up being better than a couple, couple copies of Grief over the next few turns. <laughs> you may absolutely pitch cast that Grief to take my reanimate. Absolutely. What did Grief pitch? Grief pitched Exhume. Um, Opposition Agent is not necessarily a bad draw. The timing's a little off. 
All right. Opponent's at 11. So this is the fourth land drop. My opponent doesn't have to fetch to cast a Grief. So this, unfortunately, takes one of my creatures and puts a card in my graveyard for the purposes of reanimate, which is a negative for me. All right. I am fine with the Orc token trading with Grief. Otherwise, my opponent can keep taking two every turn. No block. All right. Um, I'll, I guess, make this land drop and call it a turn. The reason to make it is an Archon of Cruelty somehow getting into play off something like a show and tell. I want to have the land in play rather than try to make my opponent use another grief to take my card or whatever. Oh, they are going for the beatdown. I'm just going to take that damage. I'm still very healthy and I'm swinging for more damage than you are overall, assuming both my creatures can attack. That is a reanimate. Sure. Uh, we're going to try to continue to beat down here. See if my opponent wants to block. They do. Um, again, same reason as last turn. I'm just going to play this and pass. There's a Lotus Puddle. I imagine you're just staring at me now, right? And I just need to reach the point where I top deck another threat. My opponent can't play cards like Faithless Looting. Like, the cost is just so very high right now. And even the reanimation stuff isn't particularly strong right now. Herborg here. Doing some good work. Uh, yeah, we will we will absolutely send the Grizzlebrand to the Shadow Realm. I will let my opponent keep that Faithless Looting. If they play it, life's bad. Like, I'd rather them not just, like, end up doing something like top decking a Dark Ritual and then being able to hard cast a Grizzlebrand. Okay, cool. We got that game. What do I want to do this game? I, pr I probably do want some extra answers when I'm on the draw. Like, my opponent just reanimating one of my griefs or something is a little scary. I also might be too threat light, boarding out both trolls and reality smashers. I think, I, I think I'm just okay with this. I'm definitely in weird build territory. Uh, this is a very awkward hand. Like this is this is exactly like the ley line thought sees reanimate problem that I talked about. Um, I'm still keeping it, and I'll dump those into play. The hope being that one of these two cards can punch a hole in my opponent's hand and stop whatever thing that might have stopped Leyline or otherwise get a show and tell. All right, you are unmasking me, which cannot get a creature and cannot take both of my pieces of discard. All right, my thought sees is gone. Um, this allows me to... It, it shows my opponent what I drew, but this allows me to not play Urborg, which can matter for opposition agent reasons a little bit later on. So let's Inquisition. Nice, it is show and tell. So I will be taking that. Well, well, well. So now we're going to have this awkward game where both of our hands suck. And we're in a strange top deck war. All right, opponent not willing to pull the trigger on Faithless Looting. Edict is good. I'm going to play Ancient Tomb here in an attempt to not play Urborg for as long as possible. I won't miss a land drop on purpose to play, to avoid playing an Urborg. All right, there's the looting. In Tomb and Exhum go to Exile, so my opponent still has both of these cards. Uh, yeah, well, uh, stay the course and pass. All right, there's another land from my opponent. That's a Thought Not Seer. That's quite good. I shouldn't have to worry about days. I'm going to play that without playing Urborg, I think. And just hold this in my hand to potentially discard to Archon of Cruelty later. Um, the opponent has three, four, five mana towards Archon of Cruelty. I probably just take that out of their hand, leaving them with Dark Ritual and Reanimate. Thoughtseize gets to take my Shouldred's Edict, but every point of life is relevant here. Um, 
this might be the turn that I just pull the trigger and play the grief. Or sorry, the Urborg. Because it saves me a fair amount of life this turn. Like otherwise it's three it's like it's three life versus zero life. So let's take out another card. We will take out the Dark Ritual, as that lets my opponent hardcast more things. I have my opponent on a two-turn clock. No creatures in sight for either of us to reanimate. Sure, there's there's some digging. I imagine that reanimate went to exile. Yeah. Okay, cool. I guess Inquisition right now is fine. There's a show and tell gone. Fucking savage. Yeah, so my opponent is on a one turn clock. And I don't know what gets them out of this on three mana. Like it, it just they just require two cards to do something cool, like land and shouldred, for example. Yeah, we have gotten the GG's from my opponents. We're 2-0. Oh. Yeah, so um, deck doesn't have perfect mana, unfortunately. We will mulligan this hand, but damn, this one would have been sweet if the mana worked. How do I feel about this? Throwback Reality Smasher. Just turn one, grief my opponent. Turn two, cast Opposition Agent. Hopefully turn three, Thought Knots here. I think I am down. I can always pivot if I don't think griefing my opponent on turn one is a good idea. <laughs> ah, fuck. Why'd we lose the die roll? Uh-huh. Yeah, no, this is fine. Yep. Burning Wish, Double Crack, LED for blue? No. Oh, you just have enough to peer. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Don't even need to get spicy with Bind's Desire. So my opponent now gets to draw half the cards in their library. I think I just concede to a discard spell that targets me. Like, there's some very small world where I'm not dead, but... Peer into the Abyss resolving should just mean that I die. And I think hiding the information about what nonsense deck that I'm playing is more value than seeing if my opponent fizzles on 8 mana. Okay, yeah, they've just got a Burning Wish for lethal. And there is the Lethal Tendrils targeting me, and we are dead. Uh, my hand was very good if I got one turn. But I didn't. N nothing to be done there. All right, Null Rod's in, Inquisition's in. I don't think I like Leyline of the Void here. I think it's just five cards. Smasher? Could be Smasher. Could also be, like, reasonably be Reanimate. The Reanimate is only going to be good with Grief. But maybe that's just enough of a reason to keep it in. Yeah. I think I trim one Troll. I could maybe trim a Land instead. Like, go down one Eldrazi Temple. But playing this ahead of curve matters. Okay. If near Deadlands. Dark Ritual. Inquisition of Kozilek and Orcish Bowmasters. Is that enough? That might not be enough, honestly. I have turned to Thought Not Seer or any other creature that I draw. Stops peer into the Abyss lines. Reluctant keep. Maybe this one is supposed to just be a mulligan. All right, yeah. Lose a life. Inquisition my opponent. Ooh, they have two payoff cards. I'm not taking Brainstorm or Bobble. Those are very good with my Bowmasters in play. Burning Wish probably has more flexibility than Infernal Tutor does. I'm going to take Burning Wish. And we'll play Bow Boy. Shock my opponent and hope to top deck reasonably well. I don't think I have to hit on my next draw. But I do think I need to hit on one of my next two. So my opponent's not going to crack the bobble immediately. Yeah, that would be what I would do as well. Whiff. I still get two points of damage in. And that's reasonable. I'll get another one off the bobble trigger and Orcish Bowmasters, and then I'll be attacking for three. Oh, holy fuck. Did not expect that. I expected my opponent to play more conservatively. I'm not saying that what they did was wrong. 
but I definitely thought that this game was going to have a slower pace and I was going to be picking at my opponent for a while. So Adnaw's lines got a lot tougher. Peer into the Abyss doesn't work. Natural Storm is probably where we're going. Like a Past in Flames baseline will still work, for example. Yep, don't have Opposition Agent. All right, let's see where this goes. Petal. Another writ. That's eight total mana. Right of Flame. Storm's only five? They're like a Galvanic Relay situation that's going to happen here? I, I'm not sure what the tutor gets. It's like tutor for tutor for tendrils is not lethal. Ah, okay. It is a goblin situation. Um, is that going to beat me? Probably. 16 goblins. I didn't board in Plague Engineer. I can get up to 6, cast a troll. I take 3 damage in doing that. I'm at 16. I think playing the troll gives me the best shot. Fortunately, does cost 2 life. This forces my opponent to potentially leave back more blockers. As I do, like I am presenting 12 points of damage in theory. Do I have Reality Smasher in my deck right now? No, I don't. So always block one. Always block one. Take ten, go to six. I think I need everybody here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm on outs without Plague Engineer in the deck, though. Sure. If I block four of these, I still take ten. I do not have lethal this turn. Uh, yeah, that's a shame. My, hand, my initial hand was not enough. I was on the fence about the mulligan. And maybe I should have mulliganed. But like as as we saw, Bowmasters put my opponent into a they like they are forced to pass the turn pile, which is like what I knew from the time that I kept the opening hand. Good on my opponent for casting that brainstorm though. I think that's why they won this one. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. Okay, I'm going to keep this hand, and I'm going to hope that a turn to Reality Smasher is good in this matchup. I have some pretty respectable top decks. But, like, we're, we're very much hoping my opponent isn't playing Daze, for example. Swamp. Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize taking my Dark Rit is annoying. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> why didn't you take one of my creatures? I mean, like, obviously I know why. But seriously, the reanimate is a kick-ass draw. Ooh, no! 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 <laughs> Damn it! <sighs> Is that a grizzle brand? Yeah, that was a grizzle brand. Alright. The life's bad. My opponent knows what's up. So I don't think I need to concede. But if my opponent produces a second creature, I probably just will anyway. Because like an Archon of Cruelty will just very easily beat my turn 2 troll. There it is. F. My opponent goes to two. Can I still win this game? No, right? Like, this is five. My opponent will gain an additional nine. And that's too much for double reality smasher attacks. Plus edicts. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, damn. So, ley lines in, inquisitions in, edict in... I think I ended up playing Dismember last time as well. And I think the game plan was fat out for these cards. I hate the fact that my reanimates are just worse than their reanimates because I'm playing Ley Lines. But like, Grief Reanimate Grief is so good. But like, without the trolls, my own reanimates get significantly worse. 
but I don't want the trolls in my deck because they're a great reanimation for my target. Reanimation target for my opponent after I line them out. This is an awkward matchup. I don't like it. If my opponent has a creature in their hand, this one's a banger. Am I willing to gamble that? I think I'm okay even if it's a grief. I'm going to keep it. Underground River. The Ark Ritual. Thought sees you. That's a grief. I will take a grief. I will reanimate a grief. I will... I think take your show and tell? And Inquisition a pedal? You think that's the plan? Show and tell. Inquisition you. Take pedal. Weird turn. I am at 13 life, by the way. Just for anyone keeping track at home of what that turn did to me. All right. There's a grief. It junked a Cabal Therapy. Now my opponent can reanimate that grief if they want. And they probably should. Ooh, they are not going to. I'm at 13 life. Like, I don't, I don't know if they, like, are cognizant of that fact, but I am at 13 life. I did 7 points of damage to myself. Um, we'll, we'll do some light punchies. Okay, they are, they are going for that. Is this sorcery only? Sorcery only. So I lose my dark ritual that currently doesn't have text. So I'm technically winning this race now that my opponent waited a turn. Right, because like it's 13 all and I get the first attack. But if they had reanimated it on turn one, they would have been winning this race. So like I'm very thankful that they waited. All right. 10 all. No creatures in the graveyard for the purposes of the other reanimate. And life totals are getting low fast. Like the reanimate is going to be outside of range of a major creature imminently. So I will hit for three. Bringing my opponent to seven. Would I like to take four damage to kill that grief and force my opponent to reanimate it again, losing four life in process? I mean, they can't really do that. They'd be dead on board, right? Oh, God. Greatness at any cost. Was activate if near deadlands on your bingo card today? If so, please mark it off now. All right, that is an unmask me, which will miss, and I assume that is essentially my opponent conceding. Cool. Swing in with grief. Put my opponent to four. Pass the turn. And step. I have dealt <laughs> not quite 15 points of damage to myself, but damn close. All right, cool. We get to go to another game, and my opponent did not see ley lines this game, which is really nice for me. I'm going to continue boarding this way. Like, it feels weird. It, like, it really feels like I want Reality Smasher to just finish off my opponent and get them out of reanimate range faster. But especially on the draw, just, like, unmask into reanimate, giving my opponent a hasty 5-5 five -five on turn one is just absolutely horrifying. Okay, I am going to keep this hand. We have a good turn zero play. We have a good turn one play and a good turn two play. And we'll just kind of see how wild my opponent goes with their turn. It is a Thought Seize, which could take either one of my plays, honestly. Like, it can go either way, depending on what my opponent actually has in hand. If they have something like Serenity that will answer Leyline, they just take my Thought Seize. If they don't, they take my Opposition Agent and put it into the yard and just accept losing one other card to Thought Seize. Thought Seize going down. Ooh, yes. Uh, sorcery speed that, I think. So that my opponent can't entomb in response. That was a very good draw. I'm super happy with that. Like, I, I have no gas left in hand, but I am hoping Leyline plus Opposition Agent is enough. Ooh, old frame. Old style Faithless Looting. Discarding two copies of Animate Dead. It shouldn't matter which one of those I play here. Just play one and pass. All right, do you have the show and tell now? That's the thing that'll beat me, is show and tell plus creature. 
Graveyard's off, tutoring's off. Unmask target me. Whiff. <laughs> I got nothing. Um, real talk, though, I am terrified. Eh. I'm probably supposed to play this one. Don't have a five drop in my deck anymore, though. This is fine, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's crash in for some damage. Hope to get a little lucky. I, I need to dodge. Uh-huh. No hard cast grief. Fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's crash in with opposition agent. When it's at eight. At this point, I am just going to play out the swamp so that I have more black mana in play. That's a land from my opponent. We're both flooding out. Um, that's a super reasonable draw. If my opponent randomly has Orcish Bowmasters, I need to cast Dark Ritual prior to this Thoughtseize. I'm not going to play for that line. I'm just going to cast the Thoughtseize. Show and Tell is gone. Whew. Uh, we dodged one of the scariest things there. My opponent's at five. Ooh, that's a fantastic draw for them. Because that lets them potentially assemble new show and tell plus creature, which is what they need here. This game is tense. Discarding Dark Ritual and Reanimate. So much mana. So, so much mana. I will attack for three. Putting my opponent to two. I don't think I have to make this land drop, so I'm not going to. Are you dead, opponent? Oh, it seems like it. All right. Moment of truth. Get in there, little buddy. Whew. Uh, we, we got there. So talking about this board plan a bit, when I go down these 10, or not 10 threats, when I go down these 8 threats, like things like this are going to happen where I get 14 cards deep and only see one threat, like that is to be expected. So maybe my board plan is wrong for this matchup, but again, hard to tell first matches with the deck. Perfect mana base at its finest. We're going to have to mulligan this one. Yeah, um, this is fine. Opponent's going to five. Probably means combo. I am going to keep this. If I draw exactly opposition agent, then I want to have ancient tomb in my hand. Otherwise, I don't want this card. I am going to throw back Ancient Tomb, and if I draw Opposition Agent, it's, I guess, a little awkward, but, like, Reality Smasher without losing life would be cool. I don't know, maybe Triple Eldrazi Temple is too much to hedge for. Yeah, I, th I think I should have kept the Tomb. I I've talked myself out of it. I think that was wrong. All right. Opponent's on four cards. Another Urborg. See what's going on over there. Free animate and spy. God damn it. <laughs> That's a tilt. Okay. Awkward. So I guess I'm taking mana. This one casts Tinder Wall, I guess, which gives them black. Sorry, not. Or uh, Wild Canter. Man, that reanimate in hand is so incredibly awkward. All right. Spirit Guide it is. I think it's also possible to take the reanimate there so that Chrome Mox doesn't imprint or black with that hand. Um, but yeah, that one's kind of rough. Ah. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Thought sees target you. It is Memory's Journey. Uh, we're going to continue taking the mana here as that is the battle that I have chosen to pick, and we are going to have Reality Smasher as a very fast clock. Um, but this is definitely still spooky. That is a grief. Even if I had Ancient Tomb, I would play Smasher over it this turn. It's just so, so important to get the show on the road here in terms of ending the game. Oh, we're done here. Okay. So what do I have in terms of interaction? Null Rod, Inquisition, Plague Engineer does stuff if my opponent does not play Bridge from Below, but they should be playing that, so I'm probably not going to board it in. Uh, Dismember can technically do some stuff, but I'm probably not excited about it. So 
feel awkward in these like graveyard matchups in that like I kind of want to cut these things but like reality smasher is such a good way to close the game I think I need these nine cards Bowmasters masters actually isn't insane here doesn't have the same degree of utility that it did versus reanimator I can probably cut those and then if I junk smashers I can keep troll plus reanimate this is probably fine on the play I might play smasher over troll this is not quite right, but is probably strong enough that I just keep the hand. Like, it's possible, but pretty tough for my opponent to turn one through a ley line. I'd kind of like to draw another black card so that I can pitch that black card to grief while using troll to hit a land drop. Okay, my opponent may have a no play turn. Ooh, it is another grief. So I think I'm on Grief, Pitch, Grief. All right, Pitch, Grief. Force of Vigor on my Ley Line. Let's see how good the rest of the hand is. Ooh, unfortunately, it is a double creature hand, which I am not great at stopping. So, Lotus Petal or Dark Ritual? My opponent currently has no black mana. If I leave them... With Dark Rit, I probably die one turn after they draw black mana. I think forcing them to find black mana is better than forcing them to find generic mana. So I'm going to take the petal here. And we will play a land. And I got to get a little lucky here, honestly. Ooh, untapped. That's another Lotus Petal off the top, which means that I am dead. Yep. There's the Spy. Guess I should probably take a picture of this for the purposes of next game. So there's four Force of Vigor, one Foundation Breaker. Summoner's Pack to find it. Still Pact of Negations. Okay. And they are playing the bridge from below, by the way. So my good friend, Plague Engineer, doesn't do what I want it to do. That's a Cobalt Therapy target me. I don't need to show them extra turns. I see Dread Return and Thassa's Oracle. So we are done here. Um, I don't believe that I'm going to make any more changes here. This is a double Leyline hand. I'm going to keep it. Like this hand just grief reanimates griefs on turn one. The question is, like, what do I do? Like, do I put in two Leyline of the Voids, then in better versus Foundation Breaker? Or do I put in one and then pitch the second one to Grief? I think I put in both, so Foundation Breaker isn't an out. So Grief, pitch Opposition Agent, target you. Okay. So I don't care about your Thoughtseize. I care about your Undercity Informer. Send that away forever. Then I will go land, reanimate grief, and my opponent is done with me, and our good old black Eldrazi deck puts up a 4-1 finish. So the league results were obviously very positive here, you know, 80% win rate, pretty happy with that for a day, but what do we think about the deck list itself? I think the main deck construction is pretty solid. Ultimately, the question that I have at the end of the league is, like, is the Eldrazi stuff worth it? Like, the Thought Not Series and Reality Smashers did some work in some matches, and having them, like, playing a Thought Seize or a Grief into a Thought Not Seer is, like, absolutely a gut punch. Like, that is rough. And if you do some other disruption and follow it up with Reality Smasher, like, that's fine. But is having those cards better than having, say, you know... Douthy, Voidwalker, and Shuldred, and then a more consistent mana base. And I don't know that the answer is yes. The thing that I'm most uncertain about after playing these games is whether or not my sideboard configuration is anywhere near correct. Like, I was definitely cutting a lot of the top end versus the combo deck list, especially, like, the ones that had reanimate, where they could just, like, Savage me with a Thoughtseize into a Reanimate, even if I had a Leyline shutting off their graveyard. 
but playing against reanimator twice maybe is giving me a skewed perspective on this the amount of mana felt about right in this deck list like it it is heavy on mana and you could maybe cheat a little bit but i don't know that i want to cheat if sideboarding out trolls is going to be something that i do somewhat regularly because like you you're counting troll as part of your mana base but i was able to very consistently do something at least a little bit broken in the first two or three turns very regularly and if you haven't already got the memo the grief reanimate troll package is incredibly good in legacy and revisiting old shells to try this package in it is something that you definitely should be doing folks i hope you enjoyed give me your thoughts down in the comments below and remember if you need paper magic cards check out cool stuff inc and use promo code thrabenu to save five percent on your order i hope you have a great rest of the day See ya.